You have no idea what goes on right before I hit the little live button. There's a little, there's a lapse and it says, um, we're checking for the connection. And it's almost like, to me, it's like, it's telling me, wait, you have a, still have a moment to go back. Um, for those of you that follow me also in stories, I had a sort of a, the last hour and a half was a little challenging here. Uh, I was expecting a delivery because I wanted to make a, a certain kind of cocktail tonight. I wanted to do something with fruit in it. And it was supposed to come between uh, f two o'clock and six o'clock. And so it came at 5.58. So it just arrived. And of course the one item, they're usually pretty good the place I get stuff from. They didn't put that one item in there so it wouldn't have arrived anyway. So I'm glad I didn't cut it close. So I have a little, um, because I'm a restaurant person <laughs> or because I'm used to having guests, um, I panicked. And so I made something a little, uh, a little extra. Um, hello from the Philippines and uh, oh, glad you like the sweater. I was, I was just um, running around and I almost felt like I'd take a shower because I was like, uh, but everything's fine now. We can all relax, right? Hello in San Diego and Spain and Maryland. And I can just say hello to everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the funny thing is I got the order um, and I'm almost out of peanut butter. And a few years ago, a friend of mine brought me peanut butter. I said, can you bring me some um, organic crunchy peanut butter from Trader Joe's? Because I'm almost out. And I like having a jar of it just to snack on in the afternoon. It's very good for you, peanut butter, high in protein. Uh, and he brought me two giant jars of Skippy like this from Costco. And you can see how big they are. Each one is at least a quart of peanut butter. So I'm almost at the end of one of them. Um, hi, Brad Parsons. Yes, jumper, jumper, avocado. It's like, it's not a onesie. Okay, uh, I'm almost out. And of course, everybody's telling me that I should be making my own peanut butter. I don't like my own peanut butter. Um, Cause I like the contrast between the smooth and the crunchy. Um, you don't get that when you make your own your own peanut butter. Um, you can't get it that fine. Um, someone says French people don't care for peanut butter. Um, does Roman enjoy it? Um, he hates peanut butter uh, very much, but uh, what's interesting is the French people like peanuts, but they don't like peanut butter. And there was a chocolatier in the seventh and he, was, he made these peanut ganache chocolates that were great. And I was like, why are people eating them? Um, like, do people buy those? And he goes, yeah, because it reminds them of sitting in a cafe having peanuts. So they like peanuts, but not peanut butter. So I think it's a texture thing. I'm not sure, but that's okay. I don't like everything. Um, so anyhow, I got, you know, I was like, okay. So I was at the health food store this week. I made my one weekly trip there because I just had to get out of the house. And I bought this super fancy hazelnut uh, butter instead. I thought, well... If I'm gonna spend a premium on peanut butter, I may as well go with hazelnuts. So this was about $10. I hope it's good, I haven't opened it. A lot of oil in there. Um, but the place I ordered peanut butter from, uh, the place I ordered groceries from, had this French natural peanut puree. Um, and it's smooth, so I'll let you know. Is this good? Nat Ali is saying it's good. You mean this one or this one? Or the Skippy? And you can buy Skippy here, but um, I'm not really into, I, I kind of like the natural organic uh, peanut butter with chunky, not homemade, and not the stuff they make at Whole Foods if you put the thing in the machine either. Um, it tastes very good, it's just a textural thing for me. I like peanut butter, I like the store-bought natural stuff. So, oh, the hazelnut's really good. Okay, great, well I love hazelnuts and they're pro it's probably from Italy and Italy has such great hazelnuts. So today I have two things for you to talk about. Um, the cocktail I was gonna make, actually I have a couple other things. The cocktail I was gonna make has gone to the back burner. Have I tried Hell's Kitchen peanut butter? Where can I get that in Paris? Oh, I know like Skippy. Okay, sorry, Brett. Well, maybe that's why she hasn't invited me to her house yet, but she's, uh, she's lovely. Um, so maybe she, she'll invite me and Stanley Tucci. <laughs> okay. I decided I can't compete with him. I'm going with green and I don't work out as much. So say what you want. Um, so where was I? Brad, you interrupted me. <laughs> this is what happens when I read comments. And somebody mentioned to me that you can turn comments off, especially when you do the double thing, um, which I think makes you able to see things, but I like interacting with you. So I'm gonna leave comments on, um, even when I have guests. I hope you enjoyed Michael yesterday. By the way, um, he's at Bone Imports, B-E-A-U-N-E Imports, 
and <clears throat> he just put a picture of himself um, in the kitchen at Chez Panisse, probably in the 90s. I just put a picture of myself from 1985 on my uh, Instagram, and I had a lot of hair, um, and I'm leaning over, and my waist was literally this big. It was tiny. Um, I used to be one of those people who was like, I can eat anything, I don't care, and then I turned 40, and that, that all changed. Um, somebody criticized my knife technique uh, in the photo, um, and I, you know, I said, well, I was working at Chez Panisse and you weren't, so, <laughs> so there. <laughs> I was, my job was slicing rhubarb. It wasn't all that noble, but it was fun. Um, will yesterday's be an IGTV? Yes, it's in there. You can now put the, the, inter, the, uh, the two-way interviews on Instagram um, in the IGTV or put them in your feed. A lot of people were asking me about that, and I don't know if this is the official reason, but um, Instagram said it was a rights issue. I don't know if this is the official reason. Let me go back. Uh, it might have been a rights issue. So, because when you have a guest, it's a different thing. So, I think that they were making sure everything. Someone said I looked foxy in that photo. Someone remarked on my chest hair. So, I guess I had my, I was like unbuttoned and letting it all hang out a little bit in Berkeley. But I didn't live in Berkeley, I lived in San Francisco and I have a lot of stories. And maybe someday I'll have Michael come back and we'll just talk about um, Chez Panisse. So, <laughs> no, my new waist is not a half inch wider. It's a lot wider. And um, that's that. We'll, we'll, ch we'll change the subject. Okay. So this cocktail, I decided to do one of my fallback cocktails. And it's a cocktail called the Bronx. Um, David Wondrich once said about it, um, it's not as tough as a Manhattan, which is why it will never get the same acclaim. It was in, invented around the, I think the 1920s or 30s, I'm not exactly sure. Somebody else can uh, maybe tell me the exact date if you care, um, but we don't need to know the exact date. We just know it's a good cocktail, it's a fallback cocktail. It's not a Manhattan, it's the Bronx. And what's interesting, I don't know what the Bronx was like in those days, but I think it was a lot milder and now it's a little more rough and tumble and Manhattan's a little more, uh, more uh, upscale or maybe clean. Because I remember growing up, like going to New York in the 70s and 80s, it was scary going to Times Square, taking the subway. The subway, you would definitely get mugged. It was like, do not take the subway. If you took the subway, you would just get mugged. And they were all covered with graffiti, but now things have cleaned up. And I never went out to the Bronx. And last year or two years ago, I went with my friend uh, Renato Poliafito, who owns Chow Gloria. Um, Please pin the recipe. Oh, uh, then I have to stop. Okay, I'll, I'll do, uh, I might read it. Um, do I, should I stop and pin it or not? Say yes or no. Now I forgot where I am. Help! So anyhow, my friend Renato took me up there and it's like, there's a street called Arthur Avenue. If you ever go to New York and you go, yes, Times Square is scary now. Uh, if you go there, these stores have like homemade sausages and homemade mozzarella and there's a coffee um, supply, like coffee supply store with coffee pots and so forth. And it's very Italian American and you almost feel like you're in um, Italy except it's Italian American, not Italian. So, but it's close. They just have more tomato sauce on food <laughs> and meatballs. So, um, okay, so the Bronx cocktail. Let's see, I have my little table here. It was very exciting getting my food delivery because this company is really actually kind of cute, but it's always, there's always like one thing. I don't usually check everything, but there's usually one thing missing. Um, and they had Padron peppers and I was so excited. And of course those were missing the last time when they ran out of those. So we did get some, but they weren't as good as the ones you'd get um, in Spain or in the US. All right, the Bronx cocktail. It's got gin in it. And I have lots of gin here um, in my apartment. Thankfully, I have lots of different kinds of gin. There, um, it's got two different kinds of vermouth. It's got red vermouth and white vermouth. Today, I'm doing something a little different. I've got, because I don't have any more dry vermouth. I'm gonna use this cap course, uh, it's like a white aperitif and it's made similar to vermouth. It has more uh, quinine in it, um, but it's a perfect substitute for white vermouth. And I promise I'm gonna go to the store when I get the nerve to go back out again um, and get some more. And I made some homemade vermouth from my book, uh, Drinking French. 
and it's been aging in a barrel. <laughs> I was kind of playing around with a lot of vermouths. It's not exact, I didn't, the recipe in the book, you don't age in a barrel and it's usually white. Um, this is aged, so it's closer to red vermouth. So I'm gonna use it. It's got a very interesting flavor. Um, you can make, I mean, vermouth is not that hard to make. The word vermouth comes from the word wormwood and wormwood is an herb. So theoretically you should have that herb in it. That's the same herb that's in absinthe. It's a different strain that's used in vermouth, but it's bitter and it adds that sort of mouth clenching quality to it. Okay, I thought someone was gonna tell me. I have a barrel at home. Yes, I have two. Took me a long time to find a cocktail aging barrel in France. Uh, and people said, go on eBay. Uh, and a distiller said, do not go on eBay. Because a lot of them come from countries where they're not, um, they're treated with stuff. They're not made for liquor. They're, they're, uh, they're not really made for liquor consumption. They're decorative or whatever. So this is the homemade vermouth I made. And it was barrel aged, which is like Noily Pratt. Noily Pratt barrel ages their vermouth for a year out in the open air by the sea. Um, which is meant to capture the flavor and the scent of the ocean, like the old days when the, the wine came from Spain and it got oxidized. So this is what it looks like. This is the vermouth homemade. It's not, faint, it's not distilled. It doesn't look polished like stuff you buy, but it's because it's homemade. Mmm. Oh, that wormwood in there is really tangy. It's great. You know, in the old days when you wrote a cookbook, you always like panic because you say, I can't put a recipe with wormwood in it. You know, no one's ever gonna make it. But now with the internet, you can buy everything. And I don't, I don't love having to order stuff just to make a recipe, but it's kind of a fun thing to do. And once you buy a little, you know, these five or six little bags of herbs, you can make a lot of vermouth for the rest of your life. You never have to buy a bottle again. You can spend your time making peanut butter too. I'm sure you're, well, you want to tell me that. All right, so <laughs> enough said. A lot of people are asking me where I got my shaker and where they can get one. This is called a Parisian style shaker or a French shaker. Um, just looks like that. I got it at a flea market and it doesn't have any mark on the bottom except that, which I think is the silver mark. Uh, be careful buying used shakers because if they don't fit, like they don't have a good seal, you, from what I've learned, you cannot have them redone. You cannot have them done. So you start shaking and you start dripping on your shoulder. So um, I was lucky I bought this. I think it was like 20 euros or whatever. And it's silver plated, I think. Um, but it works well. But I don't know where to get one. You could try Etsy, eBay, Le Bon Coin in France. All right, the drink. Two ounces of gin. Do you like the table? I do have a tripod coming, I swear. All right, two ounces of gin. And I've made this cocktail with different proportions. If you go online, you'll see a lot of different recipes. Um, it's been retooled by many people over the years. Uh, so, so we've got two ounces of gin, three quarters of an ounce of sweet red vermouth, three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth or white cap course. The label on this is kind of cool. So this is, I, I love these labels. Whoever designed them gets an A plus. Whoever designed this label that is on this old cognac bottle. It's not an old one, but it's a used cognac bottle. Didn't have a lot of imagination, but that's okay. I think it was a sample or something. All right, so I've got two ounces of gin, because I'm not, I'm not gonna stop and pin this, because that will take me a while. Two ounces of gin, three quarters of an ounce of red sweet vermouth, three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth, and then I'm gonna add, and you can either add one ounce of orange juice or three quarters of an ounce of orange juice with a quarter ounce of lemon juice. And that brings up the orange, um, orange juice as uh, somebody in Punch on Punch, the website once said, orange juice can lay flat in a cocktail, which is true. Orange juice doesn't have a lot of flavor when you mix it with a lot of stuff. You can make a screwdriver with it and it's all orange juice and vodka, but doesn't, uh, it's not that exciting in a drink like lemon juice or lime juice. 
So, I okay, hope I don't squirt you. You love Le Bon Coin, Gabarin. I do too, I love Le Bon Coin. So Le Bon Coin is kind of like eBay, but it's in France and it's very homey. They haven't um, made it too slick and people leave their phone number on there. So if you send them an email, they often won't call you. That's, you know, or if you, even if you text, they want a phone call. So you call, <laughs> to call the person and they want to talk to you about it. And, um, you know, why do you want it? What are you going to do with it? And, oh, okay. Um, it's very hope You can find all this great stuff there because there's people out in the provinces and, you know, way out in the middle of nowhere in France that want to sell stuff. So it's a great place to find stuff. It's very sort of freestyle. It's not super slick, but it's great. But sometimes the shipping, like even within France, if you find like a great cocktail glass and it's two euros, they'll want like 10 euros to ship it. So you found your apartment on Le Bon Coin. Yes, people buy houses on or apartments on Le Bon Coin. Because a lot of people don't use real estate agencies because they don't have a good reputation in France. So two ounces of gin, three quarters of an ounce red sweet vermouth, three quarters of an ounce white uh, dry vermouth, and either one ounce of orange juice or one or three quarters of an ounce of orange juice with a quarter ounce of lemon juice. Somebody asked if they could use grapefruit. And yes, you could. It would be a different drink and a different taste, but sure. And you could probably switch and use whiskey instead of, um, instead of the gin. Somebody in, who's a bartender once said, there's only three kinds of drinks and they're all just variations. And I actually once heard this described as a gin martini, a Bronx gin martini. Um, and it is kind of a variation on the martini. I thought that was kind of a stretch, but uh, anyway, I'm going to add some orange bitters to this. You don't have accent capability in IG. I don't know what that means. Explain. No, that's okay. I'm going to get some ice. It was funny because right before we went live, Roman, of course, sent me a text. And I said, I'm just about to go live. He knows I'm going live. I've been doing it for three weeks. And I said, oh, I, I responded. I said, okay, I'm going live, so don't send me any more texts. So of course, he send me, sends me a text. Um, just a moment ago, it says, yes, I know you're live. I know, thank you. Like, okay, so, <laughs> whatever, right. You want to get it really cold. So it does have that in common with a martini. You want it super cold. And I have a nice frosted glass. And is he driving you crazy again? No, he's, Roman is close to perfect. Um, we all have flaws. I have some too. And he reminds me of them, but no. The secret of a good relationship is figuring out what's tolerable and what isn't. Um, if someone's a good person, you can tolerate a lot of that other stuff. Like when you fold all the laundry and you put it on their side of the bed and then they, uh, they don't see it and they pull the covers and things like that. Or they text you right before you're going live. <laughs> and he's coming tomorrow, back tomorrow night. So this is a Bronx cocktail. It doesn't quite look like a martini. I am going to add an orange zest to it. Oh, I did order oranges and they came with these beautiful, I love in, in Europe these oranges, they come with these beautiful packages. And I used to always want to save them. So I'm just gonna hold this over the glass and spritz a little of the orange in there. Voila. 
And because I was so worked up that I was behind, I didn't have the right ingredients um, to make the other cocktail I was gonna make, I was um, in a little tizzy. So I made Gougere, because uh, I just figured it's, I had that restaurant mentality, like everybody's coming at six o'clock, what do I do? So these are the Gougere from my book. I added uh, black, I had some dried black olives. I made a focaccia bread recipe. I was testing one out. I put olives on top and they all dried out and they fell off because nothing stuck, stuck, stuck them on there. So I saved them, of course, because we're not throwing anything away right now. Uh, and I put, they were dried out. So I put them in the gougere. I was gonna put them, they've got some black pepper in them. Um, I was gonna put some anchovies. I peeled some, I prepared some anchovies and I forgot to put them in. So, uh, let's see. But they look pretty nice. I did pretty good in a very limited amount of time with people texting me and so forth. <laughs> so these are the gouache. If I hold them up there, these are really easy to make. The great thing about gougere is you always have them on it. You always have the ingredients. Uh, maybe right, not right now, but it's basically water, eggs, butter, and cheese. And there's a couple recipes on my blog. There's a recipe also in my book, uh, uh, Drinking French. So, mm, mm. I should, <laughs> sorry, I have no manners. I should have showed you what they look like inside. These are tiny. I made them small because I wanted them to bake fast. But they came out really nice. As you see me chewing in the background. You want gougere. Take it from me. If you want gougere, you can be eating them in less than 45 minutes. <sighs> okay. Mmm. Oh, that's a wonderful cocktail. It's so good. And look who just showed up. Right when I made the drink and I brought out the gougere. Someone asked if I used a pastry bag. I did. When I was in, I was in Italy a few years ago. And I was in a supermarket. And they sell pastry bags there like this. Just like plastic film. So I used one of those. Um. And I know nobody likes to use plastic, um, but I don't have a car, so I don't drive, so I don't, I don't, um, and we don't use toilet paper because we have one of those things for the toilet. So the toilet paper is always wrapped in plastic. So I use one of those about once a year. Otherwise I have a regular reusable cloth one that I wash out. Romano, tu veux goûter le cocktail? <laughs> he has to wash his hands. Tu veux un goucher? Hello. <laughs> mm. The Jean de Bonjour. Uh, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Second. Second. Feminine. 20 seconds. It's feminine. Seconds, I guess. La seconde. Une seconde. Oui, mais c'est feminine. Oui. Okay, merci. <laughs> Do you have discussions with your partners and spouses about grammar too? Okay, I didn't think so. Um, so I was gonna say tomorrow he's gonna be here. We're gonna do a, a French traditional jambon beurre, a ham sandwich. And I'm gonna make a beer drink to go with that as well. So that will be very interesting. So he'll be here doing that. Um, we're gonna have to go to the bakery and get a baguette, um, which is always a pleasure. It's, a, it's nowadays it's a scary pleasure, but it's a pleasure. Do you goûter le cocktail? Oui. C'est super bon. C'est quoi? Qui s'appelle le Bronx. J'adore le Bronx. C'est vrai? Cheese. Cheese? Non, c'est pas de cheese. Ça, c'est de cheese. Oui, je sais. J'ai dit chin chin. Ah, chin chin. J'ai pensé que tu as dit cheese. Oui, j'ai dit cheese parce que je suis... Euh, J'aime le fromage. Oui. Il a dit cheese parce qu'il aime. Il a dit cheese parce qu'il aime. Il a dit cheese parce qu'il aime. Mmh, c'est délicieux. Oui. C'est euh, comme la confiture euh, au cédra et à la grume et, euh, et, ah. et à l'orange. He said it's like the marmalade I made with citrons and oranges. Mais pas le sucre, juste le goût. 
not the, not sugary, but um, it has the, the taste. So everyone's saying hello to Walmart. Mm. Mm. So they should do it ensemble. <laughs> I'm trying to read comments. We oui, he said they, they're both good together. The association is fabulous. Comme nous. Ça va? Quelqu'un a dit il fait chaud ou il fait froid à Paris? Today is hot. Cold. J'ai dit cold. Cold. Oui. Oui. Um, I have a sweater Very on. Very cold. <coughs> Ça c'est bon le cocktail. Très très bon. Oui. Qui s'appelle quoi? Uh, I, I, I ne me souviens plus. <laughs> I said, what's it called? He said, I don't remember. But he likes the Bronx. <coughs> J'ai envie goûter aussi. Oui. Ah oui. Hmm. So he'll be back tomorrow. Uh, so I'm going to keep eating Gougère. Uh, mm. mm. The rain. Oh, now it's pouring rain, so I'm glad we have uh, Gougère. <laughs> There's a hand that comes out of nowhere. Et oui, tu aimes le beurre de cacahuète? Pas trop. So I asked him if he likes peanut butter, and he said, not too much. He was trying to be polite. C'est un sacrilège pour un... Quelqu'un de dire que n'aime pas le beurre de cacahuète. Tout le monde adore. Mais, c'est vrai. Mais moi, j'aime ça. En France. Ça, si, si, les Français, ils aiment ça. Pas oh trop. non, pas trop. Oui, mais tu connais que des bourgeois en France. <rire> mais je pense I que said, les. Que he les said, gens... everybody loves peanut butter. And I said, not in France. He goes, he goes, yes. He goes, well, you only know the bourgeois, like middle class people. I'm like, that's not true. Um, que des gens Il y a beaucoup de cultures qui aiment le beurre de cacahuète. Oui, les Africains. Absolument. Euh, oui, les. Euh, Il y a beaucoup d'Africains à Paris. Hey, many Africans uh, like peanut butter. It's a cheap source of protein. Um, it's a long time yeah. for historic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's good to have an inexpensive source of protein. So eat a little peanut butter every day if you can. If you're not allergic to, if you're allergic to peanuts, don't eat it. Oh, now it's pouring rain. Mm. Okay. Delicious. Very delicious. <clears throat> so that is the Bronx cocktail. And I'm sorry I didn't get to put it on my blog today. I think people were getting overwhelmed by me updating my blog so much with all the recipes. And someone said, tu as, tu as faim. Toujours. Moi? Oui, elle a dit, tu as faim. Je suis un épicurien. <laughs> I said, he's hungry. <laughs> and he said, he's a Epicurean. I'm not sure what, uh, how that translates. Epicurean, and, and it's the same word in English, but we don't really use it that much. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Africans invented peanut butter. Okay, that's interesting to know. Um, <coughs> okay. I'm sorry. On to the à, à demain. Ah, de, tomorrow it's a sandwich, a jambon beurre. Oui. David. Le, le jambon n'arrive pas. Right. I said the ham <laughs> didn't arrive in the order either, <laughs> along with the other thing. So we'll have to go to the store and get that. Oui. Oui, but c'est bon, le jambon beurre. Um, le jambon de Paris. Oui, for a true, a boiled ham in France is called a jambon de Paris. But that just sort of refers to any boil. Like if you're in the States, when you buy like um, ha- boiled ham at the supermarket, that's the equivalent of jambon de Paris. There's one company in Paris that makes the vrai jambon de Paris, the true uh, Paris. Boiled ham of Paris, and it's really good. And the grocery company that I order from, they had it, so I deli- I ordered some. And you can only order two slices. I tried to order four, and they were like, no. Uh, um, but anyhow, it didn't arrive. So I think they sent copa instead, where they probably thought I was a man of more um, more dignity. I wouldn't eat something as common as jambon de Paris, but I love jambon de Paris. And the vrai, if you come to Paris, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. But if you get the vrai jambon de Paris, it has a Eiffel Tower stamped on the ham, and it's delicious. It's really good. It's very different. Someone's asking if Paris is still under lockdown. Yes, we are until May 11th. They want to start loosening things up in France. We are going to, um, they're going to start with elementary schools. I, they, get, they said they're going to uh, make the children wear masks, which will be very interesting because they're having trouble getting adults to wear masks. So um, I will provide the measurements for the cocktail when I'm done. So hold on, get your pencils and, pedi- and paper ready. Um, so I'm not sure how they're going to get children to keep masks on. Um, I don't have children, but from what I understand, they're very hard to control. 
Um, they also want to uh, block off seats on the Metro and on the RER trains so that people don't uh, crowd in too closely. I'm not sure how that's going to work during rush hour and so forth. So they still have a lot of, you know, I don't blame them for wanting to reopen because a lot of businesses could use the business. People want to go back to work. Um, yeah, so it's one of those problems that nobody quite knows how to resolve. So I think they are um, working on that. So it's supposed to be open starting on May 11th. Somebody's asking in France that you could order two uh, slices of ham. Yes, if you go to the market, you see these. It's, it's cute because I'll see these like old ladies. They'll, they'll order like four Brussels sprouts. Um, I was at the market and this woman ordered a, a turnip this big. Um, that's a, that's a, a bruised orange. I shouldn't show you that, but I don't want to waste anything these days. Um, but it was tiny. I was like, what do you do with one turnip? Um, you know, even if you're by yourself, you want to have a few... Um, you want to have a few, you want to have leftovers. Yeah, I see people are opening, they're opening in Texas and California and so forth. Um, yes, MK so and so, uh, MK Moore, it is, I, my personal belief is it's rather soon to reopen, um, but it would be great if, um, I did see a protest in one of the Middle Eastern countries yesterday, a photograph, and there was thousands of people, um, and everybody was social distancing, and someone took an, uh, a aerial photo and it was like a grid. It was so organized. And tomorrow is the premiere, uh, May 1st in France. And it's traditionally it's a workers day uh, where usually they sell Lily of the Valley on the streets and it's um, so forth. And they usually have protests because it's the workers day. So it's the first day that they can't, um, oh, thank you, Andrew, for putting the recipe down. Um, thank you. So Andrew Loeffler, Loeffler, yeah, I got it right, I think. I uh, wrote the recipe down, but I'll say it again just uh, to be polite. So anyhow, tomorrow's a, normally a day of protest. It's a day of, um, uh, it's a jour férié, normal, a, bank, a holiday, so everybody's indoors. So it's not gonna happen. It's gonna happen virtually. Recipe and metric, please. If you, don't, if you go to Google and you just type two ounces in milliliters, it will tell you um, what that is, so which is a great thing. When I was writing my book, I put everything in metrics, which was very hard to do, because one of the, I was talking to Margot about this, who was a French woman who was on the other day, and there's a measurement that's like two thirds of, a, of an ounce, not three quarters, and they don't quite correspond. So at some point, everybody needs to decide whether they want to do metrics or imperial measurements. And when everyone decides I'm gonna do another book, a baking book, um, but I'm, it's too much to do it in both quantities. So when you all decide, let me know. All right, so I will see you all tomorrow at the same time. Roman will be here, so practice your French verbs. <laughs> and we're gonna be making a sandwich jambon beurre and a cafe drink made with beer. So that'll be tomorrow. All right. I will see you then and have a good day wherever you are. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay not next to other people, but close enough in your hearts. How's that? Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, the recipe. I said I would say it again. Two ounces gin, three quarters ounce red sweet vermouth, three quarters ounce dry vermouth, three quarters ounce orange juice, quarter ounce lemon juice, or one ounce orange juice and some orange bitters. All right, bye-bye, I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your, enjoy your evening or day or morning, wherever you are. Here it's almost 6.30 or seven, Close, closing on seven. So I'm finishing my drink, bye-bye. <laughs>